from the grim atmosphere of the research station to an even grimmer, typically English winter's fog. What could be more dispiriting than scenes like these? How they make you wonder what on earth happened to that sun-drenched summer. Sun-drenched? Well, not in England, of course, but in places like Lake Como in Italy. Italy, of course, offers 101 summer attractions, many within a stone's throw of each other. In fact, the modern trend is to take in a place like, say, Cadenabia on the lake for the more orthodox swimming and sunbathing holiday and go on later to another centre for something entirely different, sightseeing, for example, in Venice. But meanwhile, let's relax a little. Across the lake is Bellagio, on the sunny side of the street as it were, a little town of narrow streets, brightly painted houses and quaint shops with the inevitable locally made jewellery. Another local industry, made with that special talent the Italians seem to have for colourful design. Como silks, scarves and ties like these are famous the world over. Anyway, when you've literally worn your feet down or up to the knees, it's time to move on to Venice, where the fabulous canal system keeps walking down to a bare minimum. Even so, it's impossible to ignore the magnificent St. Mark's Basilica, and rising above everything, the Campanile, the sound of its beautiful bells filling the air. What could be more lovely than the mosaics of the Great Basilica? And a feature of St. Mark's Square, the pigeons. Gondoliers today have become living symbols of the city, for as most people know, the canals are the main thoroughfares. Gliding smoothly by gondola along these winding waterways recaptures in one gentle sweep life in modern Venice as well as the romance of yesterday. Unpretentious little buildings along the route are often masterpieces of architecture, yet amid all this loveliness can pass unnoticed. Small wonder it's sometimes called the fairest city of all. Ah, well, back to the grindstone, there's hope yet.